two. One, two, three, four. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Image Source live stream sit down with Sanmar. Um, a couple of things a little bit different about today's meeting than we usually have. As you'll notice, I have a different background. I thought if we're working remote, let's go remote. So, welcome to Image Source Eastern Washington. Um, uh, something else that's a little bit different about our live stream today is the timing. Usually we have you guys in, out, all buttoned up in 30 minutes. Our presentation today actually is about 33 minutes, so I wanted to let you know up front it's a little bit longer, but I promise you well worth the time. And we'll be wrapping up within about 40 to 45 minutes today. Um, as always, we will be taking your questions at the end of our um, presentation. So as we go through, you're thinking of things, type your questions in and we'll make sure that we get to everybody um, at the end of the program. So um, a little so we're sitting down with Sanmar. Um, some of you might know who Sanmar is by name. Some of you might not. And so I just pulled a little bit of information off um, of their website about Sanmar and for those of you who don't know, they're like our absolute you know, go to of folks. Um, but I'm going to use Sanmar's own words from their website to give you the introduction. Sanmar is the leader in providing the canvas for your story. What does that mean for you? That means these are the folks that provide the clothing, the look, the feel that that communicates your voice, your brand, your logos, your programs um, at a glance. Sanmar has uh, 10 distribution centers across the US. They have over five and a half million square feet of inventory space, um, over 48 years of experience in a, in a true family company, um, and they boast a one to two day delivery uh, to 99.7% of the US. Here's where you probably know Sanmar from. They are the exclusive supplier um, and manufacturer for some of your favorite brands. Uh, in our industry, they are the only folks we can get Nike from. Eddie Bauer, The North Face, Port Authority, um, brands that just go on and on and on, the ones that you're asking for all the time. This is the team that makes that happen. The other thing that I love about Sanmar is that family values really drive everything that they do. From our local communities where we all live and across the United States to the worldwide community and what they're doing in manufacturing processes, um, helping in, in rural areas across the world and what they're doing is truly amazing and I invite you to visit um, to visit their website at sanmar.com to learn more. Lastly, they are just some of the nicest people that you could ever work with in the world, period. And there we go. Um, today we have the privilege of sitting down with Vicki Ostrom and Vicki's been with Sanmar it looks like for a little more than eight years and Vicki's title is Futurist, Trend Analyst, and Trend Translator and I'm not even going to try and tell you what that means. I'm going to let Vicki do it and I'm just really going to turn the presentation over to Vicki at this point and uh, sit back and enjoy. Vicki, thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, you guys. This is a great honor to be with you today. I was uh, in the retail side of the world for a long time in my career. I, uh, in about 98, actually, I started working for Eddie Bauer, and then I went on to Tommy Bahama, and uh, eventually JC Penney, and I was an apparel designer. And then when I joined uh, Sandmar in 2011, I joined as an apparel designer. And I did that for about four years with Sanmar, and I designed the uh, Port Authority line and uh, Red House line. And then I went on to just only doing trend. I was doing trend along the way, but then I just jumped straight into completely doing trend. So I've been doing that for about the last five years. So I'm very excited to be here to share our latest uh, trend presentation with you with how some new ideas and hopefully conversation starters for you with as you go in and you know uh, think about products that you might want to offer your customers so shall i just jump right in okay awesome well this season we realized that there are a lot of questions on our minds as you can imagine about how we want to dress now and into the future given our rapidly changing world that we're living in 
So we created an official guide to style, and we have three style guides that can help us navigate this new world. Four. So here's our official guide to style, and we've got these three style guides that can help us navigate this new world. So the first one we're going to talk about is the art of fashion, and we're going to talk about the art and the power of color and the art of merchandising and how pattern is being called out as a smart choice actually for risk averse consumers, which is kind of not what you would think of. And we're going to take an offbeat look at color trends and how they relate to sustainability. Then there's collection essentials which we're all familiar with that daily struggle to figure out what our new work essentials are. Whether we're on a Zoom call or out in the elements um, with essential work, we're finding new value in everything in our closets lately. And no matter your age or what you do for a living, we're creating a hybrid wardrobe of sorts. Which leads us to elevated active. And you know we can't talk about trend without um, checking in on where we are with athleisure. And of course, we've got a new way to look at it. We're elevating the concept and we're bringing a lot more comfort to it. And then we're going to follow up with some predictions on what we might want to wear for outerwear going forward and why, whether it's to actually commute or to travel or to simply to walk around the block. So we're going to dive directly in with our art and fashion style guide. All right, so now let's take a look at this mood board. And we're going to visualize the concepts that we're about to discuss, which is, as you can see here, color pattern and sustainability. All right, when you talk about art and fashion, it isn't a big leap to think about the next generation of creatives. But what might surprise you is the subtopic here of fashion with function. Necessity is the mother of invention and creative solutions to the world's problems are popping up everywhere. Often we're finding those solutions in the artful functions that our clothing can provide. All right, so let's start by talking about color. We said necessity was the mother of invention, and right now we need to invent some happy. So, you know, color is so necessary in our lives and powerful color. Trend Service WGSN recently called out that as we move into 2122, it will be increasingly important for color to aid and enhance our mental and physical well being. They said use color to create a connection. In a world that's been tested by the pandemic, explore how you can use it to, to restore co confidence and build positive communication. In their future, in their report um, on the future consumer of 2022, they actually advised, they said you could use color to tap into optimism and that um, youth are channeling fear into joyful activism, which I really love that phrase. They said to use brights to connect to this sense of purpose and positivity, which I think is really smart. And you're going to see these two pictures up top on the right corner here, and it's an Instagram account, which I highly recommend you check out. It's called at WFH fits, which is like basically work from home outfits. And this gentleman who runs it, he gets um, images from people from around the world with what they're wearing working from home and he posts them. It's just really funny and fun to look at. Um, his little comments are great and what you're going to see about these two ladies I, that, be, that I picked out up here there. I call them beating the blues and wearing head to toe sunshine is that probably they're about Gen Xers. And that just shows me that this desire to boost our moods and the moods of those who love us, who might see us wearing these awesome bright colors is multi-generational. It's amazing that at this very moment, we actually have so much joyous color to choose from in a lot of different lines. District is coming out this season with actually 26 colors in their new VIT fleece line. And Port and Company has colors with names like Tidal Wave, which you can see in the upper right corner or left corner here. And I love this model because they have her in the catalog wearing our Champion Heritage jersey tee, but she doesn't just have one color on, she's got on gold, Kelly Green, and pink candy all at once. And I think it really tells that message of what we're just learning here from this WGSN uh, trend service um, comment here. And color doesn't just have to be solid to be joyful. A hot topic in May across retailers on their social media posts was mentions of colorful tie-dye, which were up by 21% month over, over month, according 
to social media data trackers. So what it tells us is that at a time of distress in the market, smart retailers understood that their consumers would want to know that they had colorful tie dye for them to buy. Okay, so let's talk about pattern and prints. Tie dye may in fact be our new favorite solid color. So let's take a look at that. Graphic tees are trending up massively due to their method, um, at the use as a method to show community support, which we've all seen um, really done so well. And tie dye is a big part of that trend. Tie dye is also helping to spice up online meetings and they're just a more interesting solid for inspirational graphic messages, which are also a very big popular graphic trend for obvious reasons. I mean, who doesn't need some reassurance from inspirational words and a happy mess uh, image right now? And I wanted to point your attention to this quote that's in the center here. Several trend services are calling out this common theme that we can see here, which is that because of the tough economic climate, the retail climate, it's important to appeal to customers with heightened expectations and less to spend. And that's a really important concept because many customers have less to spend or they're choosing not to spend the money that they do have because the future is uncertain. So scrutiny is being placed on each purchase. We've got um, WGSN Trend Service here again is suggesting that print stories that minimize risk and feel positive and easy to understand are the way to go, which I thought was really interesting because you wouldn't always think that in this climate, print and pattern would be what you'd want to do. It might be too specific, but they're saying that print stories that minimize risk and feel positive and easy to understand could be acceptable. Um, so we've got, you know, easy to understand tie dye. Of course, that's one as well as classics that never go out of style, like plaid with purpose. I'm calling it. These are heritage patterns that speak to longevity. Um, they're classic colors, which could be trans seasonal. They're a smart buy in the minds of risk averse consumers, which is an important thing to consider, like we just talked about. So what is the mindset of these risk averse consumers, both today and as we look into the future? How does sustainability, which is the next thing we're going to talk about, fit into our buying choices? All right, let's take a look at that. Our next gen thinking is where we're going to talk about now. So as consumers of every age explore this idea of what sustainable means to them and the environment, it's influencing product design and a big part of product, any design is color, as we know. Colors that tell a story are powerful and purpose driven. And many are rethinking color values right now. So off white and faded pastel shades are a visual shorthand for stories of circular fashion and the slow fashion movement. And all of these ideas center around the philosophy of buy better, buy less that many consumers embrace, especially members of the Gen Z and millennial generations. Beach wash and garment wash and just simply ivory or natural colors are trending. It's no mistake that this district refleece hoodie color that you can see in the bottom left corner is called vintage white because that name alludes to a color that is retail or excuse me resale inspired color or maybe it's pre-loved or vintage actually you know so it all um points back to that idea of vintage and the drawstrings of the hoodies on that particular collection the refleece are left natural for a reason too and that's because natural color suits the life choices of the customer who wants to support these sustainable ideas, ideals. So the colors tell a story of what that con consumer believes. And that's the important thing um, to remember here. But it's not just washed color that can tell that sustainable story. Bright colors are there too. Um, we've got the story behind the repurposed collection from Cotopaxi bags and the recycled fibers and the repurposed materials and brands like Cotopaxi and All Made and the District Reti and the Refleece collections are all a part of a concept called design for disassembly, 
which is where the product is made using recycled and reclaimed fibers and materials that would otherwise have ended up as waste. So you can discuss sustainability through this lens of color, which is kind of a different way to come about it. It gives you a new way to bring up important products that this next gen thinking consumer who wants to buy better cares about and is looking to looking for. Because like we talked about on that first slide um, with the art and fashion is that you want to appeal to consumers with heightened expectations and less to spend. So we want to help our consumers find those items that are valuable to them. And these kind of things are a better item in that consumer's worldview. So we want to help them find that. And a lot of times, you know, color could be a new way to talk about it, which is kind of interesting. OK, so that's a perfect segue to talk about what each of us thinks of as a collection essentials. And that's going to be our next thing that we're going to talk about. All right, let's take a peek at this mood, next mood board here. Do any of these outfits look like they came from your essential wardrobe? <laughs> I know some of them look like they're from mine. This is about workwear for a new age. There is no business as usual. Rethinking what we wear and how we need it to function frames each apparel decision as we move into this changed world. So let's take a look at this. On June 29th, the New York Times had an article called the video call is starting, time to put on your Zoom shirt. So what are those work essentials that we keep grabbing day after day? So let's take a look at this next slide. Shirting is now a key item. We've got button friends, we've got wovens, it could be a knit, it could be fitted, it could be oversized, a camp shirt, blouses, tailored, tidy or not, like, any kind of shirt, basically we're finding that shirt concept is our new favorite go-to. It's pulled together enough to be tidy, but it's not so formal as to make us look overdressed. And we're styling them in our own unique ways. As you can see from more of these work from home outfit Instagram posts that I'm showing you here, we've got the shirt as a suit, which I kind of loved. Um, she's wearing a tie. We've got shirt as a layering piece. And then we have the seriously unserious stylings of some forward thinking uh, people, even if it's a serious stripe that she's wearing. Solids and patterns and stripes, all of these are important in our shirting, but fashion runways are pointing to stripes possibly winning out our favor in the long run. Stripes showed up on the spring summer 20 catwalks up 13% year over year. And shirt jacks are also a top trend to follow. They, we've been following for a couple of years and they're just accelerated now. They're often what passes for soft suiting nowadays. Here's the OGO reversible shirt jacket that we've just come out with this season. And then you can also see on the right, this new era coaches jacket, which online at samar.com, I was looking for an image of this and I loved how they styled him because he's wearing it exactly the way that we're talking about right now, which is kind of as a blazer or like a suit jacket for the new age. And, you know, we're really learning how to style it as we speak. And I thought he was a really great example of how people are wearing it. All right, so let's go on to our next idea, which is the wardrobe that essential work demands. Okay, here's some of the items that would be included in that collection. These are the Zoom shirts of people who are doing strenuous labor, um, construction crews, farmers. And let's take a look at this next picture because apparently it's also uh, Gen Z's and millennials who are working from home and style their workwear for the runway. You can see more of these work from homers up in the top right corner from um, that Instagram account who are showing us their outfits from any random Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. And you can see that they're wearing this workwear actually. Um, there's this laid back you luxtility vibe I'm calling it going on here. There's the heritage styles and true workwear which speak to the aspiration of many people who want to live an authentic life that's close to nature and embrace a DIY ethos. And these core premium items fall into the category of high value by any measure to anybody but they're actually considered luxury collection essentials by the Gen Z generation. 
traditional workwear items like hoodies and Henleys and beanies in workwear inspired colors or actual workwear colors are a huge trend with these younger generations. We also have classic plaids like the new authority, um, Port Authority Buffalo plaid, which fit into this consumer's closet, as do heavyweight tees like you would actually wear on a work site. And they're being paired with true premium workwear. And top streetwear brands like Champion and, um, for example, APC, who did a collaboration with Carhartt, are all over this six ounce heavyweight tee for their most forward graphic stylings. And they're often sold out due to, due to their popularity. It's really the tee that they're going to, which is why we're now gonna talk about this hybrid closet that most of us have probably always had to some degree, but now we're embracing and realizing the newfound benefits of these workwear styles. All right, so here's what it looks like. Let's take a look at it. We're wearing workwear for every aspect of our lives these days, and here's why. What we like about these pieces is that they're timeless classic styles. They're familiar, they're investment worthy. The pockets offer multifunctionality, which we're looking for. They're classic fabrics that are often seasonless, so we can wear them all year long and it's, it's always appropriate. They're a year round useful product. Utility shirts with all of their amazing pockets now hold hand sanitizer and masks and our own pens so that we don't have to touch anything that we didn't bring from home. And vests and jackets have zippered pockets often so they can hold things safely and you know a little bit more germ free than other things that we might carry with us. So you know heritage styles also are trending up like chambray even if they're just inspired by a classic rather than a style you would have actually perhaps worn to uh, ride a tractor in 1930. But it's a great example of a style that we're turning into an essential work item um, that is an essential work item, ex excuse me, into a new work essential in our wardrobes, no matter what we're doing for a living. And finally, here's our elevated active style guide. So, Let's just drink in the elegance and the relaxed vibe of this mood board. I just love this one. There's the comfort of the clothes, the little bit of touch of gold, which represents the metallics trend that's happening in apparel as well as accessories right now. And the mixing of an obviously performance zip front base layer that's being worn with an expensive suit jacket and a leather hip pack. It's a super cozy pile of Sherpa flannel blankets. And here's a young man in a white shirt and tie who's tying his Chuck Taylors, of course, as you would wear with this, because the point is, is that it's all about the elevated and the active. All right, let's take a look at what this um, concept is about, which is a little luxury. And a little luxury means a lot these days. We're finding comfortable ways to dress that still feel like we can look professional. And that really is possible because we're mixing cozy with elegant and that's what's making the future look bright to us. So here's where we're going to introduce you to a new word for athleisure because you knew there had to be a new one sometime. So let's take a look at this next page and uh, have a little drum roll to say that the new word for athleisure is this leisure. Biz leisure is the new athleisure. Um, that's a word that's being talked about quite a bit lately. And what it looks like are shapes that are simple and easy to wear, fabrics that are softly structured yet approachable and not overly dressed up. So all day comfort is key. To style it, we're looking for luxe tailored styles. And I have tailored in quotes here because of course they're not really tailored, but they are what tailored looks like today. Shirts with a woven shirt look, but that have a tremendous amount of stretch so that you can move in them, like the Port Authority stretch tunic would be one of those items that would be biz leisure. It's knit jackets of all types that give you a jacket or a blazer of old days type words, um, silhouette, but it's easy to wear um, in, it's a, easy to wear knit instead of like a woven. It's easy layers, like this new sleeveless blouse from Port Authority, 
or even a performance t-shirt like this um, Sport Trek Tri-Blend Dolman tee. So it's got like a fashion silhouette, but a performance fabrication. Or the District Flex tee that's a little bit more upscale. And it's also a lightweight French Terry Bomber or a Sport Tech District VIT crew because when you put them in an ecru color or an oatmeal heather, they look somehow more elevated and work appropriate like we saw on the mood board. It's because it's active wear for inactive situations. And I love that phrase because all day comfort is what's key about biz leisure style. So let's talk about what comfort means to us and, and as we've all been through these trying times lately. In many categories of product, be it technology, home, beauty, or apparel, there's a design emphasis on surfaces for the senses. We're designing for all of our senses right now, especially including touch. You've heard of haptic response in relation to new technology, and that's um, what's going on in apparel too. It's understanding the little luxuries that we talked about at the beginning of this style guide. Because as we've turned inward in the past few months, our world has gotten smaller. We're moving in as much as possible to the inside of our homes, and we've come to understand luxury through things like a soft sweatshirt or a cozy blanket. I mean, these terms mean so much to us now. Cozy, tactile, we're looking for fuzzy things like Sherpa fleece, and ribbed sweaters or ribbed t-shirt knits are being called out by trend services as a texture of note. And I really thought this was interesting because they said the rib, um, the rib structure actually kind of molds to your body when you're wearing it. It supports you. And they said it feels like a hug, which it kind of does. It's kind of an interesting concept. It seems like a small thing, but those sensorial touchstones really matter a lot to us right now. Um, soft touch, luxe, and smooth are important. Um, and at Sandmar, we've added a, a men's style to this Luma collection. As you can see, the um, guy wearing this gray um, quarter zip, it's, it's from Ogeo, and we've never had a men's item in this fabric before. We've had it for a couple of seasons, um, but because it's a modal blend, it sort of feels like cashmere, and that equals a little luxury every time you come in contact with it. And then there's the sense of being protected, which feels very comforting right now. Puffy jackets and puffy vests have been trending for several years. And right now they have particular relevance because they're actually a lightweight padded bumper between you and the outside world. And they're actually a lightly um, structured garment that's visually strong. Um, they're tidy and professional, like the new transition pieces that you can see um, below the puffy on the bottom right corner. You know, they're easy items to pop on over a tee and they have an instantly professional look. And I would also point out that this street puffy jacket that you can see here from Ojo is protective in a literal sense in that it's padded. Of course, that's true, but it also has a DWR finish on it. So it's protective from the elements as well. And that brings us to our last elevated active style guide that we're going to talk about. And it centers loosely on the idea of commuting. And I love how this page turned out with the word commuting landing squarely on top of the laptop and the phone on a bed, which is really the extent of most of our commuting right now. But even though we don't act actually know the future of commuting or travel, it is our job as businesses to think about what it will look like and what we will want. So we're gonna examine the reconsidered commute for a minute. Trend forecasters are predicting some version of what this quote from WGSN calls out, which is that post pandemic, the way urbanites travel will undoubtedly shift from public transport to cycling and scooters to maintain social distancing. And anecdotally in Seattle, I don't know if you noticed, but as of mid July, public transport use or transit use is down 20% and people walking and biking, they said was up 200%. And WGSN called out that this will spark the need for more versatile and modular outerwear and that bring elements of performance wear and outdoor weatherproof durability into the apparel market. So that shift in behavior is accelerating a trend that we were already tracking for the last couple of years, which is that our need for protective gear, um, we need our need for a protective gear on a much more regular basis, excuse me. 
And that means that we're placing a high value on design features like longer lengths to our jackets. So the jacket touches outside surfaces, like if we're on a bus or if we're sitting down in an Uber, the jacket is touching those surfaces, not my clothing underneath, which then I'd have a more of a chance to keep it clean. Um, larger hoods and high collars um, protect us from weather. They're easy to pull up as a secondary protection for our faces, which is something that's on our minds now for reasons of germs as well as for weather. And of course, wind and water resistance also protects us as well as those things that we may carry in our base layers, like those workwear items that we just talked about that we're loving with all the pockets full of our things. We love modular things. Uh, we want interchangeable layers, as you find with the Port Authority Collective Group that you can see on the bottom left here. You have an outer shell, and then you make your own choices as to which or how many of the inner layers that you want to add. You've got a tactile, cozy, protective fleece layer, which is what we what we just talked about wanting. Um, we just added that in the middle um, this season. Or you can wear each of these pieces as their own style because it's modular. You design it and style it as you want to. We want adaptable items. So up top in the middle, we have this reversible shirt jacket from OGO that we were looking at um, on the collective uh, 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 style guide before, and it, but we saw it on the green side of it. And this is the black side. This is lightweight, it's water resistant, it's padded protection. So again, it's all those sensorial things that we were looking for, all the things that we want. And then we also want streamlined items which contain all of our stuff. So it goes into the bag and nothing is gonna touch the outside world unless we take it out of there. And that's something on our mind. Because we're looking for convenience. We do not wanna clean things if we don't have to. We wanna keep them clean from the start. And you know we want packable items like this padded vest down on the bottom center pops into a pouch and then you can stuff it into that OGO backpack that you see above. We want transitional. So transitional items is part of that convenience story because I wanna wear this Luma full zip. And again, it's that Luma fabrication we were talking about from OGO that's on the bottom center. And I'm gonna take a walk and it's gonna protect me from the chill, which I want then I'm going to dash back inside my house or my office at the very last minute and I'm going to turn on my Zoom call and I don't have to change because I already look professional in this Lux Biz Leisure active wear. And that's the kind of thing that I want to do. That's the way I want to live my life is this transitional clothing that does two things for me. OK, so let's end on a quick touch on color. Um, we've already talked about it in a variety of ways, but Here's three very different, but all really important color groups that consumers are drawing to for specific reasons right now. We've got mood boosters, grounding neutrals, and power pastels. All right, so WGSN predicted color for 2022 as embrace joy. Consumers will be seeking uplifting, optimistic designs and experiences in challenging times. So use mood boosting brights for environments products and packaging. Um, and then we've got our other, our next item here, which is grounded in mem uh, grounding neutrals. And you know, they're really the color of earth. They're minerals, they're soil. You know, you can't get more grounded than that. They feel good to us right now. They're inherently understandable in an increasingly hard to understand world. And they're also grounded in memories. As Trend Service Fashion Snoops points out here, they said, COVID-19 has left us yearning for memories of yesterday and feelings of nostalgia. And they also called out that there was a shift toward non-binary neutral shades on the fall, winter 21-22 runways, which is a group of color that's great for the bottom line because um, they're, gen they're not as gender specific. They're more inclusive. Uh, you can have less product skew count while at the same time expanding the number of consumers who would potentially want that product, which is what we're all looking for. And the same could be said for our next color group, which is the Power Pastels. Peach and light pink and mint greens specifically are trending up because they're very inclusive colors to the younger generations. Pastels are also soothing. They help to calm us down and slow us down. 
In their light, in their color insight for fall, winter 21, 22, fashion snoops called out soothing comfort. These light infused pastels evoke an ultra sensorial experience that encourages us to indulge in stillness. Consumers seek out comforting therapeutic shades. So just like the mood boosters and the grounding neutrals, we're really using color as a therapy for ourselves in this new world, which I thought was kind of an interesting way to look at color and something that we can use in our businesses. So what do I want to remember? What are those takeaways? Well, with art and fashion, we were reminded that color can be an emotional boost, that classic patterns are feel good choices for the risk of averse consumer, and that to the next gen consumer, who is really anyone who has a less but better worldview, sustainable, sustainability stories come in all fibers, fabrics, and importantly, colors, which um, as sustainability is influencing, influencing what kinds of colors are trending, we can use that conversation to bring sustainability um, concepts to consumers um, through the concept of color, which is sort of nice. And then with collection essentials, we looked at workwear for a new age and shirts are perhaps the key item for 2020. Think of button front shirts of all shapes, sizes and fabrications as your new work from home soft suiting and the classic seasonless fabrics and, and useful multi pockets of traditional workwear are making these styles popular for everyday wear and young consumers are actually styling them as high fashion. And finally, with Elevated Active, we thought about how a little luxury means a lot and that the comfort of activewear has created a new style concept that we're calling biz leisure, which is the new athleisure. It's comfortable clothing that's often activewear, even though we're wearing it for inactive moments that might be behind a computer. <laughs> and trends that we're well into have not really changed as much as accelerated. And more than ever, today's clothing needs to be adaptable, modular, and protective as we begin to explore what we need to feel safe and comfortable in this new world. And finally, with color, mood boosting brights are lifting our spirits. Um, grounding neutrals are soothing, calming, and therapeutic. And powered pastels are soothing, or excuse me, grounding neutrals are understandable, not, not nostalgic and inclusive, sorry. And power pastels are soothing, calming, and therapeutic. And hopefully this presentation has been all of those things too, along with helpful. That was our point today. Um, we have a couple of items that are available from this presentation if you needed them or wanted them to either remember what we talked about or to work with your um, customers with. It's a one page compilation of the presentation um, that just kind of has all of our ideas here. Um, and also we've got these color pages with the style numbers that are listed out for easy reference in case you're interested in any of these to use in you know, your own marketing thoughts or anything like that. So again, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Vicki. Um, it just, that was awesome. I. Um, I, I was taking so much out of this, but definitely two of the big things that I realized was um, my grandpa was cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Workwear, work pockets, utility, um, and true. all of those things. And that Seattle, as much as I've complained about it, has been ahead of our time for years. Who knew that what we were wearing is called biz leisure? I was just cool. <laughs> So um, <laughs> I want to jump in um, real quick to our question and answer and we have Vicki available for question and answer, but we also have um, Robin George available for question and answer and Robin is our go to gal with Sanmar. She is our um, territory manager for Northwest region. She's been with Sanmar um, for 12 years, but in business to business um, sales and you know customer support for 28. Um, she serves our teams uh, in the Seattle area from the defunct West Seattle Bridge all the way up to Canada, which we can't get into anyway. So 
Um, but before we do that, it wouldn't be an image source meeting um, unless we were giving away some great merchandise. And so from the presentation today, we are going to give away two sets of the beach, the Port Authority Beach Wash Cinch Pack with matching visor. So first two people type your name in um, to question and answer, type in your email and your phone number, um, and we will get these uh, goodie bags out to you. So um, the first question that came in, um, and I think I can answer this one pretty quickly, but if Robin or Vicki, you guys want to chime in. The first question that came in is, is Vicki or someone else from Sanmar available to work with me and my image source team on a consulting basis? And the quick answer to that is 100% yes. Um, our image source account executives work very closely, especially with Robin, um, on really the, the frontline level of meetings and meeting with you and your teams and talking about all of these things that Vicki has gone over. Um, this is what's happening at Samar in the background that they're learning, that they're bringing to us, that they are helping us find the right solutions for your guys' team. So yes, um, your image source AE and um, definitely Robin. And if we really need the expert, I have Vicki's email address. So. <laughs> um, uh, the next question I am going to throw to Robin to tell a little bit more about. And the question is, is there a showroom um, where we can view uh, Sandmar's products? So Robin, I'm going to let you take that one. Hi, I'm Robin, and um, we do have showrooms in all of our distribution centers. And here in Issaquah at our corporate office, we have a showroom. Unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 and the pandemic, the East Point showroom is closed and we are not allowing people to go there. Um, I think um, we'll be looking at that through the end of fall, possibly reopening it um in 2021 but we have to be really careful to take care of the employees that still go in um, as far as our distribution centers which we do have one here in preston washington they um, are accepting appointments and that has to be an appointment and i believe they're doing three um meetings per day for people who want to come in and see product at the Preston Distribution Center. It's not as beautiful as the East Point showroom, but it does carry all of the products. And um, when you go there, you do have to sign a form and get your temperature checked and all of the, we take all of the precautions to make sure that you're being safe. Awesome. Thank you, Robin. Um, I know it's just helpful a lot of times um, to be able to touch and see and take a look at the clothing. What I want to remind people of too is let us know what you want to see um, and we'll bring in samples. Um, your guys' team can order in samples. Um, we can ship them straight to your home or alternate address where you guys are taking a look at these and uh, we can help out that way big time as well. Because a lot of times, I, I mean, touching it and feeling it makes all the difference. Yep. Um, I've got another question for Robin. Um, and I get this question a lot, so this is a good one. Can you explain a little bit more about the eco options? Um, you mentioned something, Vicki was talking about the RET um, and sustainability. It's very big for our company right now. Yes, I am happy to talk about. We we launched the RET, um, it's by district um, last fall or early spring, um, but this tea is an eco-friendly tea. It is made out of 60% fabric ends. So these are all the leftover pieces of fabric when we're making t-shirts and such that we pick up off of the cutting room floor. We bail those and then it's 40% um, recycled plastic. So about six plastic bottles per t-shirt. And so these have never been re-dyed either because the color of the t-shirt comes from the fabric ends. So this has just been a super new um, piece that we're excited about. It's the DT8000 and the DT8001. The men's version is a crew neck and the ladies version is a V-neck. And in the fall of this year, we are also launching the district refleece. So we have some fleece options of, as well that are going to be um, totally eco conscious. We launched the All Made t shirts. The All Made brand is a tri blend t shirt that is made out of 
um, recycled plastic bottles, um, modal, uh, I think 50% recycled plastic bottles, 25% modal, and then 25% organic US grown cotton. And so we also have those in crew neck, in V neck, in long sleeve tees. And then the most exciting new eco conscious piece that we're adding is Cotopaxi. Um, Cotopaxi is a very fun um, bag line. I do believe they have apparel as well, but we are going to bring on three of their bags. And these bags are made from scraps of fabric from other high-end brand bags that they were gonna throw away. So these bags are all multiple colored bags. Um, we have a hip pack, we have a, a backpack that will hold a hydration pack, and we have a day pack. When you order these, everyone is unique. Everyone has a different color and we call it the surprise because you get a different. No one has a, a identical bag as you have. So those are some of the highlights. That is awesome. Um, and Robin, I know I've just recently been introduced to that Cotopaxi line. My cousin had a bag this weekend and they are fantastic. I'm excited that you guys are adding that in there. Um, now I have one more serious question and one fun question. Um, we do have a viewer, Vicki, that says, <laughs> where did you get those amazing frames that you're wearing? <laughs> oh, I'll happily tell you this. Um, there is the most amazing little gift shop that's in Pike's Market or very near Pike's Market. It's called Finney, F-I-N-I. And um, it's right kind of like next door to Sur La Tab, if you know where that is. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's just this little store and these are actually readers. These are like 50 bucks, you know, so I, you know, check it out. <laughs> um, we I got my earrings too and my necklace, so. <laughs> we have someone out there that is a, a big fashion buff. They're um, in our first, one of our first live streams. They're asking about Jeff's shirt, so, you know. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> what we're wearing. Um, question uh came in and i think i can um talk about this too but rob and i might have you jump in are there options to put a logo on the sherpa and other textured shirts um and yes 100 percent. and what i would recommend is that we um embroider those uh because that's going to um kind of bypass the texture so that you don't have some sort of wavy imprint or different thing there's different probably some of those metallic type pieces or patches robin what um what are your thoughts there um we would suggest we would suggest either embroidery or a patch on those items and in fact we got samples of a lot of those sherpa items and faux fur and fleece with patches and embroidery so that works very well awesome and then um question last one that i'm seeing let me make sure that there's no more um Last question is when uh, are the Cotopaxi items um, available or about an approximate timeline? I think Robin, I'm throwing this to you. I, okay, um, I believe I heard that they're going to be available the first or second week of August. So awesome. like around August 6th, okay. give or take. We'll, we'll, um, we'll stay tuned on that and let people know. Um, I don't have any other questions. I'm watching the questions pop in and I don't see any. Um, I know you guys have stayed a little bit longer than we usually do, um, viewers out there, and I appreciate it. I hope that you really um, learned some things. It's amazing to me how much subconscious um, goes into this and what's really happening and how people are feeling. And I feel like now I can kind of walk forward with a little bit more of that and talk about it. So Vicki, thank you. Robin, thank you. Um, Sanmar in general, uh, who is year after year named our, you know, supplier of the year. You guys are incredible. And I also want to thank my um, partner in crime in the back end. And I know she won't put herself up on the screen and that's fine. But um, <laughs> Sierra Lyle, who uh, is my producer on this event. So thank you all. Um, we will have this video available in the next day or two up on our website. We'll also be posting it on social media. 
Um, so if you missed anything or you want to jump back in and learn some things or share with your team, you can take a look um, and join us in a couple of weeks when we sit down with um, Chris and Karen Stoffer from Cascade Marketing uh, to take a look at some great um, work from home trends um, in hard goods and in um, virtual event swag. So thank you all very much. Have a great rest of your week. If you're in Seattle, enjoy the sun. Don't complain about it because I'm cold <laughs> all the time. Um, thank you guys very much. Um, have a great day.